welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. If you've served in the military, the Alaska VA welcomes you home and thanks you for your service. We encourage you to enroll for the VA health care benefits. Apply online in less than five minutes. You can also print, fax, or mail the two-page form to the VA. You do not need your DD-214 to apply. Cook Inlet Tug and Barge is a marine transportation company specializing in harbor services with a primary marketing focus on the Port of Anchorage, providing their customers with quality-based service specifically tailored to their needs. The National Weather Service. And good Friday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It's the 12th of September. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your latest weather happenings and warnings, watches, and forecasts for your part of Alaska. You can do that very easily on your cell phone or your computer by going to weather.gov slash Alaska or arh.noaa.gov. You can do that uh, also through your NOAA weather radio or give us a call at the weather info line 800-472-0391. Find us on Twitter, on Facebook, and on YouTube during the day. And again, you'll find a lot of that information throughout the day in between the Alaska Weather Show and in between forecast updates from the National Weather Service around Alaska. Here's a look at what's going on in South Central tonight. No watches or warnings for Southeast, so we're all clear there. We're still watching for uh, higher than normal river and stream levels across uh, eastern parts of Kenai Peninsula in the western Prince William Sound region. Uh, thanks to the onslaught of rain moving in tonight, expecting anywhere from three to six, maybe local amounts of seven to eight inches of rain across all of Prince William Sound as we head through the next 24 to 48 hours or so and leading us into early Monday morning. And that's going to present some issues for areas along the Kenai Lake area and all the uh, rivers and streams that surround it. So if you're going out and doing some hunting this weekend, uh, keep in mind that you may run into some uh, higher than normal stream levels and some of those could be approaching bankful. So just be extra careful and remember the safety rules for flooding. Turn around, don't drown. It's pretty easy to remember and uh, does apply to any size, shape of vehicle that drives around in Alaska. All things float, but only for a second. So be extra careful out there. Out there on the uh, higher terrain of the Alaska Range into the upper Kuskokwim Valley, high wind or wind advisories are in effect right now, even for the area shaded in red. And that's normally including for a warning, but everything's under a wind advisory right now. Some places are going to uh, ramp up into a high wind warning starting later tonight, and that is uh, for the Alaska Range there. We're talking about winds that could ramp up to uh, uh, about 45 to 60 miles an hour from the south, gusting up to 75 miles per hour. Now in the areas uh, around the upper Kuskokwim and the Deltana and Tanana Flats, a wind advisory for the upper Kuskokwim will likely fall off later this evening, but for the Deltana and Tanana Flats country, uh, you're talking about wind advisory levels that'll keep gusts around 50 miles per hour or so uh, that could last uh, well into Sunday. So uh, look for those gusts to stay with you through Sunday afternoon around four o'clock. Uh, also, we've got a high wind warning out for the Anchorage area. That is for the Turnigan Arm region specifically and the uh, higher terrain. Uh, looks like those gusts could continue to around 75 miles per hour. The worst of it will be this evening. The upper hillside will probably see some gusts uh, that will push upwards of uh, 45 to maybe 50 miles per hour at its worst. The lower Anchorage area as far as the municipality of Anchorage, Eagle River, not expected to see any substantial or threatening gusts at this point. So we've got a lot of wind moving northward. That's also going to keep the interior under pretty dry conditions for the most part through the majority of the weekend as well as above normal temperatures. So you get a little bit of a bonus out there. And for the central Aleutians, a high wind warning continues there uh, through 11 a.m. Saturday. That includes Adak and Atka, not to mention the storm force winds surrounding the islands and offshore region there right now. Uh, but westerlies from 45 to 60 miles an hour sustained with gusts to 75 miles per hour will continue through tonight and into early tomorrow morning. The warning continues until 11 a.m. Saturday. 
The satellite picture across the North Pacific shows that long track of moisture stretching all the way back into eastern Asia. This trail of moisture is connecting up with several waves of low pressure. The major one, of course, sitting across the southern bearing and keeping the wind going across the chain, the peninsula, and the heavier rainfall across southwest and south central Alaska now into Prince William Sound through the weekend. Each one of these disturbances will likely latch into the power that is that southern bearing cyclone and right now it's at one of its stronger points. It will ebb and flow throughout the next several days and as long as it doesn't really latch into a great deal of Arctic air, uh, it probably won't turn into a, a, a super storm at this point. But uh, right now we see a lot of uh, moisture enhancements coming in from the south and west crossing into the north and western part of the Pacific. Here's a look at all of Alaska. Southeast is going to be the place to be if you want quieter weather for most of the weekend. High pressure seen carving out a nice uh, ridge here across uh, south and eastern sections of Alaska and the northeastern Pacific. It's also working though with low pressure across the bearing to bring in a, a heaping handful of Pacific moisture. And you can see that uh, stream just working its way well into the North Pacific. Uh, across the interior, a lot of drier air. Now, if you're looking to see the aurora, you didn't get a chance to do it last night, uh, probably the interior will be the place to be around Fairbanks and places northward. You have a better chance seeing a clearer sky and therefore the aurora, thanks to uh, frequent uh, coronal mass ejections from our sun. But out across the west, out across uh, Kodiak Island, south central, and even northern parts of southeast, Clouds are going to be pretty thick and only getting thicker for many other places across the interior. So if you don't have a clear sky tonight, chances are the clouds will be creeping back in fairly quickly. You can see uh, quite a bit of cloud cover working across the southern Bering Sea, and it helps when there's actually visible satellite picture to look at there. And today we have that. A lot of convection as well uh, south and west of Kodiak Island early this morning. That turned into some lightning strikes in some cases there. So if you thought you heard a little bit of thunder out there, if you made that through the wind, then uh, chances are that's probably what that was. South Central looking at a tightening wind gradient heading through this evening. The strongest winds will be blowing through Turnigan Arm and the hillside and uh, areas in South Central through tonight. It should start to relax a little bit in the morning. Then the wind will focus on the Alaska Range. Again, some of those gusts could exceed 75 miles per hour. As high pressure moves north and south a little bit, it may allow for a little bit of rain to reach into southeast. This will be a waning or glancing blow, mainly showers than anything else. The triple point moving in toward Prince William Sound, that will bring the highest surge of precipitation in through tonight and early tomorrow. But you will still be looking at a wet weekend that will probably take you well into Sunday and Monday. Low pressure out across the southern bearing at 962 millibars will keep a pretty tight pressure gradient across the central and eastern Aleutians. That means high winds, at least with the central Aleutians, that could gust upwards of 75 miles per hour will continue through tonight and early tomorrow morning on top of storm force winds. There are other storm uh, warnings there across the Bering Sea and where there aren't storm warnings, of course, there are gales and those extend well into the western Gulf tonight and into tomorrow. Across the north slope, a relatively dry and relaxing period with areas of uh, clouds from time to time, but that looks to be about it. By Saturday, you can see a stalled frontal boundary across the north slope. That's keeping some of the cooler air right there along the coastline, but just south of that, considerably warmer conditions and pretty much dry conditions there. You can see the showers working their way northward across Kotzebue Sound, the Seward Peninsula, and that pressure gradient really isn't focusing a lot of wind on your area just yet. And across the southern Bering and Bristol Bay region, that tight pressure gradient is going to be a part of your forecast. And with that strong south and westerly flow from time to time, more of an easterly wind cutting across Bristol Bay on Saturday and Sunday. The 969 millibar low still across the southern Bering and south and west of the Pribilovs, transitioning to more of a southeasterly position by the end of Saturday. And that's going to keep uh, southerlies coming into the Alaska Peninsula and the Kodiak Island region. That means more rain and gusts for you. The frontal boundary working across Prince William Sound will throw on the brakes and that means that southeast will probably not get a taste of all the moisture that's working its way into the northern Gulf. So if you're in Petersburg and Craig and Klawak and Annette, Ketchikan and Hyder, it could be a beautiful Saturday for you. As we get into Sunday, really more uh, clouds than anything else across northern parts of southeast. Juneau included there, a 1,017 millibar high just west and south of Haida Gwaii will stay in position. The frontal boundary lingering right across the northern Gulf. Showers continue for Yakutat, Prince William Sound, and south central Alaska. Kodiak, a uh, better chance for seeing rain and clouds, maybe some wind as well, with a 987 millibar low just south of Cape Newenham. 
A trough of low pressure now sitting across the Alaska range. The winds will subside quickly as we get into Sunday for many areas, including the higher terrain and areas north of the range. Showers start to cross over the Yukon Valley, moving northward. A frontal boundary moving just a little bit further northward toward the offshore regions, allowing some showers and fog to form right along the coastline. Wainwright, Barrow, all the way toward Kaktovik could be looking at some dreary weather from time to time. And the pressure relaxing across the southern and northern Bering Sea. Uh, for the central and eastern chain, still some breezes, but Sunday will be a remarkably improved day as far as the wind goes in the Aleutians and the Bering. As far as southeast goes today, temps were in the mid to upper 50s. Some areas like Ketchikan and Annette and Hyder made it into the low 60s. Prince William Sound in the mid 50s today, 61 in Kenai, 55 in Anchorage, 60 in Talkeetna, just shy of the 70s around Fairbanks today. In fact, I believe temperatures around the Wainwright area made it up to about 71 degrees. Pretty fine day there as far as temperatures go. Those above average temps will continue again tomorrow. 64 around Fort Yukon, 57 for Anaktuvik Pass, and then you know, a remarkable difference along that northern frontal boundary area where temperatures were only in the mid-30s for the Arctic coast. Kotzebue Sound saw temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Nome, 63. Unalakleet, 57. McGrath was 64. Around the Yukon-Kuskokwim Delta, temperatures along the coast were in the 50s inland, including Bethel in the lower 60s there. McGrath, again, fairly mild. As you get out toward uh, the Pribilovs, temperatures hovered in the upper 40s to lower 50s. And 60s for the Bristol Bay region. The Alaska Peninsula was in the 50s, 50 for Atka, 54 in Adak, and 53 for Shemya. Overnight lows remain mild out across the interior and points west with uh, most areas in the 40s and 50s. South central, coastal sections in the lower 50s, southeast generally in the lower to mid 50s, but a few areas might drop into the 40s tonight like Petersburg. The Aleutians in the lower 50s, the Arctic coast at or just below freezing with a high tomorrow near 40 in Barrow. Uh, for most of the interior, especially around Fairbanks and the middle Tananaw Valley, highs will once again near 70 degrees. South Central will be a little bit cooler than that. Lower 60s there, 57 around Kodiak, upper 50s for the Alaska Peninsula, 53 for St. Paul, and upper 50s to lower 60s for Southeast with Nome at 54. Flying weather, as far as visibility goes, will start to improve during the afternoon tomorrow for many areas in South Central, but watch for MVFR conditions across the Gulf. Now, closer to that zone of low pressure in the bearing, watch for IFR conditions there to be fairly widespread, and MVFR across a large chunk of the bearing. IFR conditions also expected around coastal areas on the north slope. Your pass conditions in the north should be fine. Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass expected to be VFR. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass will see slow improvements throughout the day. Rainy Pass expected to be MVFR. Same goes for Windy Pass. Isabel Pass should be marginal through most of the day. Mentasta Pass we expect to see VFR transitioning toward MVFR for Tanita Pass during your Saturday. Portage Pass obviously IFR around Prince William Sound for most of the day. There may be some improvements very late day heading for VFR and Chilkoot and White Pass at this time look to be A-OK. -okay. As far as morning freezing levels go, that warm air has interjected itself into the upper Yukon Valley and even further northward levels there at least 10,000 feet if not higher, 12,000 feet across the central and southern parts of southeast. And then we have our cold core here across the eastern and central Bering Sea, those levels as low as 6,000 feet. Icing potential has been pretty widespread today. Uh, some of those uh, include isolated to moderate rime across a good chunk of the storm coverage area. That means the southwest coast and close to the Pribilovs, the Alaska Peninsula, and even south central. So thank you to all of you pilots that have been reporting. Uh, that certainly helps our forecasters and then helps us help you fly safer. Across the Brooks Range, there will be increasing icing potential there, but a lot of this is still pretty high up there, around 10 to 12,000 feet, thanks to that very warm air. But it sure is wet, and once you reach that level, there could be a larger icing potential than what we've seen uh, late this summer. Tomorrow's jet stream shows that low wrapping in on itself, and that means it will undergo some changes over the next uh, couple days. But right now, the strongest winds are south and west, around 120 knots. You can see it speeds to around 65 knots there, and then picks up speed one more time around south central Alaska at 110 knots. To the north, a colder jet stream is dropping the air uh, that's colder and drier, more winter-like all the way into the lower 48. So once again, if you've seen friends complaining about the weather in the Midwest and Colorado and farther north than that, with snow and freezing temperatures, that would be the reason. We are on the warmer side of this weather system right now. At 9,000 feet, low pressure sitting across the southern bearing. That's drawing in the northerlies across the western bearing at 55 to 60 knots and keeping southerlies across the western Gulf of Alaska from 30 to 45 knots. High pressure slowing the wind down across southeast with a weak onshore flow between 10 and 15 knots. 
and slower winds across the North Slope around 10 knots thanks to high pressure parked up across the Beaufort Sea. Southerly is coming across the Kenai Peninsula at 3,000 feet for 30 knots, 40 knots around Nunavak Island coming in from the east and wrapping into low pressure at a much faster pace there to the west, 50 to 65 knots. And looking at turbulence below 6,000 feet, you'll still run into some pretty choppy weather here. Uh, some of that could reach an isolated severe threshold. So again, be warned, the flying weather across the eastern Kenai and Prince William Sound will not be at its best tomorrow. The Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, some of that could still be pushing isolated severe. Uh, most of it will be occasional to widespread moderate along the Alaska Peninsula and into the central chain where, again, high winds could be gusting up to 75 miles per hour, or 75 knots. So some of that, uh, again, uh, could be pushing that uh, isolated severe if uh, uh, you dare to fly out there anyway. Below 4,000 feet across the Pribilovs and across the Arctic coast, below 4,000 feet for some light isolated moderate at this time. That's a look at your aviation forecast. We'll be back in just a few minutes with your marine weather for the weekend. Stay tuned. Good evening. I'm Harry Keeling, and on behalf of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation, and Alaska Public Media, welcome to Hangar Flying. This evening our guest is Jeff Oshinsky. Jeff has had a distinguished career in federal service for 27 years with 17 years in Alaska. In the early 90s he was the manager at the ARTCC, later, <coughs> excuse me, later manager at the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit and the Anchorage Volcano Advisory Center. He's now the Deputy Chief for Environmental and Scientific Services Division. In short, short, the Regional Weatherman. Jeff, welcome to Hangar Flying. Oh, great, thanks. It's good to be here, Harry. Oh, welcome back. You've been on the program before. Thanks, yes. Um, obviously, weather forecasting is extremely important to pilots and operators and people involved in aviation. Uh, and you, the National Weather Service, has got a big operation up here in Alaska. I think the latest numbers I saw were 240 people in 19 stations. It's a big effort, and and I got to tell you, I appreciate what what you guys do. You've got a tough challenge, and and it makes AV what doing the fresh professional job that you do contributes significantly to aviation safety. So thanks very much. Let's talk a little bit about one initiative that you and I had talked about with future potential. Um, so describe some of the modernization efforts. Well, Harry, we're um, in the process now of modernizing our aviation services in Alaska. And what that means is basically going from an old way of doing business of typing up forecasts and uh, creating graphics by hand, essentially, to going to this digital database. And what this means, well, it will allow us to be able to derive a whole uh, variety of products, basically whatever the users really want from this digital database. And the beauty of that is all our offices in Alaska will be tied to this database. So whether you're a pilot or a mariner or whatever you, you forecast you happen to look at, it's all being pulled from the same database and will be consistent. So give me an idea, give, give our viewers an idea what a new product might look like. What, what exactly will it do that we can't have done now? Well, I think the biggest change that we're going to see is we're going to see probably better resolution than the product. So, in other words, we, we, we have the standard products like the MVFR, IFR flying charts and turbulence and icing. I think what we'll be able to see in the future is we'll be able to see more resolution and granularity in the forecasts. So we'll be able to forecast more distinct layers of icing and turbulence and we'll be also be able to put these products out on a more frequent basis. Now, one of the things you mentioned to me, if I got it right, I think is very futuristic. And let's see if I can describe it right. So right now, if I'm coming back into Anchorage, I can get a terminal forecast for Anchorage, or I can get a terminal forecast for Elmendorf. But I think you're talking about maybe someday in the future, dirt strip XYZ with you can give me an idea what the weather is going to be there. I think so. I think so. It's pretty exciting with this digital database. Part of the initiative is to improve our computer modeling. And of course, the computer modeling sort of drives how well we can produce forecasts. And as we get better and more specific models for Alaska that show the, the differences uh, geographically, 
we'll be able to push that into this process. And so I think, you know, this may be a few years out, but I think we'll be at a point sometime where a pilot can take his, um, we'll say his cursor of his mouse on his computer and move it to any location in the state and click on that spot that he's interested in, he or she is interested in, and get a forecast that'll have aviation weather parameters for that site. Wow. I, I really do think that we'll, we're, we'll get there in, in a few years. That's huge. I mean, when you add that to the introduction of weather cams, we're going to have, it's really going to make an impact. It's going to open the doors. We keep saying that this is a major paradigm shift in aviation forecasts. And the, the really exciting part for us here in Alaska is we're on the cutting edge. We're sort of the pathfinder for these digital aviation services. Nobody else is doing this in the country, and they're, all eyes are, are focused on us up here in Alaska. <laughs> I'm going to ask this last question. Um, about forecasting. Is it science, black magic, or luck, or all three? <laughs> well, it's funny that you say that because uh, I, I saw a cartoon uh, repeatedly throughout my career that said meteorology is 60% science and 40% art. And I've seen the numbers flipped around, 60% art, 40% science. And so the big joke is that it's, it's sort of a combination of all those things. When you talk to forecasters, they often talk about having a gut feeling. We're trained to understand patterns and weather patterns dictate certain weather conditions. So, you know, many of us can look at a weather map and look at a pattern and say, you know, I don't think they're gonna get the rain in Anchorage. I think it's gonna be a turbulence event on the Chugash or whatever, just based on the weather pattern. And a small change in that pattern can totally change the weather for a given location. Wow. Well, all kidding aside, uh, I, I appreciate what you do and your fellow forecasters and the whole weather uh, business. And I think you've saved a lot of people and, 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 say, uh, and, and prevented a lot of accidents. So thanks very much for your efforts. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Absolutely. Thanks for being on the program. Thanks a lot, Harry. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program. And again, I want to remind you, November 15th, we're going to have our fall safety seminar. That's Alaska Aviation Safety Foundation, November 15th. More details to follow. Until later, until next time, fly safe. Good to see Jeff Oshinsky on there. They're full of wonderful information about the improvements coming to Alaska weather for aviators there. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Here's a look at southeastern Alaska. Winds will remain light across most areas in the marine zones as we go through Saturday. You'll see some changes though on Sunday. We'll see variable winds inside around uh, Petersburg and uh, through the uh, Stevens Passage region. Only about 10 knots with a two foot sea. More of a northwesterly flow though picking up to kind of a breezy level there with a four foot sea through the Clarence Strait and through the Lynn Canal. Uh, southeasterly flow most areas in the coast from 15 to as high as 35 knots around Yakutat with 11 foot seas building in. Those will diminish a little bit on Sunday down to 20 knots. Southerly flow just offshore of Sitka at 10 knots with a 7 foot sea. Look at the northwesterlies though picking up outside of Craig and into the Dixon entrance. 15 knot winds with a 3 foot sea and southerlies across the Lynn Canal with a 4 foot sea as we go into Sunday. Now for South Central, obviously a different picture. Stronger winds tonight and early tomorrow. 35 knot winds inside of Prince William Sound with a 9 foot sea, 14 foot seas outside of uh, the Hitchin Brook entrance and across the coastal areas. Some of those could reach 11 to 13 foot seas as you get out toward Resurrection Bay and outside of Seward. The Barrens are looking at more of a south and southeasterly flow tomorrow. 15 knot winds from the south uh, as you head up to Cook Inlet, 10 knots as you get a little bit farther north. And south and southeasterly winds crossing Kodiak Island. Four foot seas inside of Shelikov Strait, 11 foot seas on the eastern side by Sunday. A south and easterly flow, still a little bit breezy there across the north and western gulf inside of Prince William Sound, 15 knots with a three foot sea. Northeasterlies in the northern Cook Inlet, more of an east and southeasterly wind coming off of the Kenai at five to nine foot seas there, uh, south of Kenai into the western barrens. Uh, southeasterly flow around Shelikov Strait at 25 knots with a six foot sea should be expected by Sunday. The Alaska Peninsula is still going to be pretty windy there, especially north of Cold Bay on the Bering side. 12 foot seas there with a 45 knot wind from the south and east. 35 knots from uh, Bristol Bay with a 9 foot sea and higher gusts should be expected. Southerlies coming in from the Pacific side with 22 foot seas there south of Sand Point and King Cove. 45 knot winds on Saturday. That diminishes to 40 knots on Sunday with a westerly flow there. Still looking at 22 foot seas. Southwesterlies around Castle Cape to Chignik. 18 foot seas there with higher gusts. And 35 knot winds there inside of Bristol Bay with a 9 foot sea. 12 foot seas a little bit further down the coast. 
For the Aleutians, storm force winds are expected there for the central and central east part of the Aleutians. 50 knot winds at least on Saturday with higher gusts in all zones. 26 to 27 foot seas on the Bering and the Pacific side. Westerlies also going strong north of Unalaska to Nikolski. Slightly lower threshold winds there south of Nikolski and Unalaska in the Pacific side and winds down to 30 knots across uh, Kiska to Attu at 14 foot seas there. Those diminish further on Sunday. Westerlies at 25 to 35 knots, 25 to 40 knots though still going in the North Pacific. So 15 to 18 foot seas they're expected to wrap up the weekend. So still some stronger winds in the east. Across the west coast, an offshore flow going strong from 25 to 30 knots. So gales will continue across many areas in the upper uh, Kuskokwim uh, Delta and also across the uh, Pribilov. 17 foot seas are expected there on Saturday. That diminishes to 30 knots on Sunday. 11 foot seas there. Northeasterly is coming out of Norton Sound in the upper uh, Kuskokwim and Yukon. Uh, Delta region will have a northeasterly flow there, 30 knots with a 10 foot sea, and northerlies around St. Matthew. Broad easterly flow sweeping across the north slope, 30 knots in just about all zones, 7 to 8 foot seas there in the Beaufort, 6 to 9 foot seas there for the Chukchi Sea Coast. By Sunday, easterlies continue for the Beaufort Sea Coast, 9 to 11 foot seas there from west to east, and an east and southeasterly flow for the Chukchi Sea Coast, a 6 to 8 foot sea there in the north, down to 3 foot seas coming out of Kotzebue Sound at 15 knots as we go at Sunday afternoon. Recapping tonight's weather, obviously that is a big weather maker for the weekend. A 962 millibar low going strong, wrapping in an awful lot of wind and rain for the central and eastern Aleutians and south central Alaska as well as the Alaska Range. Many areas in the Alaska Range and Point South are under high wind warnings for tonight, including Turnigan Arm. That'll go until tomorrow morning for the central and eastern Aleutians. High wind warnings there. As we go into uh, Saturday, a lot of that will diminish quickly. A 969 millibar low still approaching the Alaska Peninsula. Periods of heavy rain continue around Prince William Sound. A, a flood advisory is posted for the eastern Kenai Peninsula for elevated water levels through the weekend and into early next week. That's a look at your Alaska weather. Enjoy your weekend and keep it safe. We'll see you again right here tomorrow. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company.